I wish to sincerely thank the organizers for, for inviting me and also for giving me this opportunity to give a talk. I'm also very grateful uh, uh, of uh, great, very grateful uh, of uh, uh, Gustavo Gustavo Garrigos who just talked before me, and if we took into account uh, very technical and difficult matters, so that I can I I, I feel myself very relaxed uh, preparing this talk and giving it now. So I'm talking about uh, I'm going to give a report about a, a joint work with uh, Jocelyn Gonesa, who is in Bangui. Bangui is the Central African Republic. Ideyuki Ishi, who is in Nagoya, Japan. And Cyril Nana, who is uh, in Boya, that is in, Cam in Cameroon. So uh, I'm going to go fast because uh, this is uh, all many people are talking. I've been talking since yesterday. Uh, the major problem is to prove that the Beckman projection on a domain in CN extends uh, to a bounded operator on LP of, of D uh, with respect to LP of D with respect to to the Lebesgue measure. So this is uh, everything is unweighted here, but uh, of course also we have to take into account uh, uh, weighted weighted questions. So here I'm also going to talk about some related questions, atomic decomposition of the uh, Beckman spaces, interpolation by functions in Beckman spaces, interpolation by functions in Beckman spaces. So I take uh, I take values in advance, and I want to to find uh, a function in the Beckman space which uh, which takes the the the, fix, the, the, the arranged values. And also, I'm going, also going to, to talk about interpolation between Bergman spaces. So uh, let me say more than Gustavo about motivation for homogeneous single domains of type 2. So a domain is uh, um, it's called homogeneous if there is a group J of biholomorphic transformations which act transitively on D. D is symmetric if every point of D is a fixed point of an evolution of D. It's known that symmetric implies homogeneous. And uh, as uh, Gustavo said before, Eric Atan uh, in 1935 uh, proved that for n equal for n equal to 1, 2, 3, every bounded homogeneous domain is symmetric. And then he asked, a condition, he asked a question, does this implication hold for n greater or equal to 4? We have to say that for n equal to 3, there are, I think, four, uh, typically four bounded homogeneous domains. The ball, the product of the disk, and the ball in two dimensions. Uh, maybe I'll forget, I shall forget one. The three disk. And also uh, 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 a domain which is more, maybe more unexpected, but uh, not as much as one can say, is called the Lee ball. The Lee ball is uh, isomorphic to the tube over the Lorentz cone. So here we are in dimension three. So uh, Eric Hattel asks this question, what happens for n greater or equal to four? Uh, so uh, it's uh, Piatek Shapiro who gave a negative answer. He first proved that every homogeneous single domain of type 2, which he defined, is biholomorphic to a bounded homogeneous domain. So he constructed a homogeneous and non-symmetric single domain of type 2 of com complex dimension 5. And uh, so when you go back, it goes back to the related bounded homogeneous domain. He has a negative answer to, uh, to Eric Cartan's question. So we also have, uh, besides uh, as particular case of uh, homogeneous single domains of type two, we have two domains over homogeneous cones, which are also homogeneous single domains of type two, called of type one. I'm going to give the details a little later. And uh, maybe four years after Winberg, 
constructed the homogeneous cone of real dimension five, which is homogeneous and non-symmetric. And the tube over this cone is homogeneous and non-symmetric. So if you can, if you do, then you, you go back, you, you, you go back, you, you get, you go to the bounded homogeneous domain, which is associated with, you have also, you, you have also have, you also have, a, you also have a, an example of a bounded homogeneous and non-symmetric cone. So also giving maybe a, a less, a, a simpler example of a bounded homogeneous domain, which is non-symmetric. So let me go sit into the details. Uh, I think uh, Gustav almost did, did, that, did that. So um, a cone is, uh, is uh, if lambda x, convex cone is if lambda x plus mu y belongs to omega for all lambda mu positive and all x and y belonging to omega. An open convex cone omega is called homogeneous if there is a subgroup J of the linear group dimension R, dimension N in R, which acts transitively on omega. An open convex cone omega is called symmetric if it, if it coincides with its dual cone with respect to some inner product. Let's say it like that. So the reference is uh, the general case homogeneous is been back. Uh, so now I'm going to tube domain over a homogeneous cone. Gustavo said uh, about that, that the imaginary part is in the cone. And uh, there's a theorem that if omega is homogeneous, respectively symmetric, then T subsect omega is affine homogeneous, respectively symmetric. So this is also give, uh, uh, says more about uh, the counter example of Pinbeck for the for Eric Atan's question. So now let us move for, to something which is maybe a little, but uh, Gustavo also talked about that maybe very, fa very fast. Omo omega is homogeneous cone in Rn. Mm. And M is a positive integer. It's completely a part. It's not, N, M is not N. And we consider, uh, we call a, a V Hermitian form. A form F which maps C, M, Cartesian portal with C, M to C, N, U, V goes to <laughs> F of V with the following, the following properties. It's bilinear with respect to the first variable. It's uh, anti-symmetric. When we are on the diagonal F of U, U, we are on the closure of the cone for every U belonging to C, M. And for every J in the group, of uh, omega, there exists a J tilde belonging to the linear group MC such that uh, G dot F of UV is equal to F G, t G tilde G tilde G tilde U G tilde view V for all U and V. So the G goes into inside U and V inside the, the parenthesis part with the uh, with a, a, linear, a linear transformation. So now definition, uh, having defined the v, v emission form, which is, uh, we can define a, a hom homogeneous single domain of type two. So now we have uh, it's a Z U, uh, uh, the points, uh, so Z is in uh, C N, U is in C M, so that imaginary part of Z minus F of U, U belongs to Omega. So this uh, definition was also give, given by Alex Nagel yesterday. Uh, and also in the, in the, this, is, this was the partic very particular case of, of uh, objects uh, he was uh, taking into account yesterday. So when F is identically zero, the homogeneous figure, the metal type two is a, is a tube over the cone Omega. So we, they used to, we used to call it homogeneous single domain of type, of type one. So let me give an example of uh, Chiateki Shapiro. For example of Chiateki Shapiro, the example of Chiateki Shapiro, the cone is the spherical cone, which as you may see easily, is isomorphic to the Lorentz cone. It's uh, with, uh, linearly isomorphic to the linear cone, to the Lorentz cone. And uh, Chiateki took 
as we view a mission form, what I am giving, uh, I give just uh, below here, f of uv is equal to zero, zero, uv bar. And he proved, I won't say it's, uh, I won't say it's quite elementary, but he proved that this domain is homogeneous, but, uh, but also it's not symmetric. So now let us go to, to uh, we, are, we are still on the single domain, homogeneous single domain of type two, T of omega f. And I want to define the mixed norm, unweighted mixed norm, the back space. So LPQ, the same notations as Gustavo, LPQ of Z omega F. So I'm interested in one in P and Q between one and infinity. One included, infinity excluded. So the LPQ norm is what I, I write here. So here is say it's less than it's less than infinity. So it's uh, just the same like a mixed norm it means uh, you have Q over P here. So when Q is equal to P, you just have the unweighted the back space. And uh, what, what, do I, what do we mean by uh, unweighted mixed norm Bergman space? It's just the intersection of this Lebesgue, mixed norm Lebesgue space with uh, the holomorphic, the space of holomorphic functions on the, holomorph on the homogeneous single domain of type two. So Winberg uh, did uh, a general theory. Here the cone is no more uh, symmetric in general. And uh, a homogeneous cone of rank R, I have to define that. Also, so every cone has a rank, every homogeneous cone has a rank, and it possesses air compound power functions like in the uh, Gustavo stock, delta one, delta R, and its decomposition is integral constant MJ and MJ. So this is associated, those are integ integers associated to the cone. Uh, so that we can, we can again, uh, define the, the vector weight delta to the power tau. Uh, so which is equal to delta one to one, delta r to, to r with, uh, with uh, to j equal to one plus one half times mj plus nj, nj. So I'm not, I shall not be more precise than that. But in the particular case of symmetric cone, we refer to Gustavo stock, to j is the same for every j, it's just equal to one plus one half times i minus one, times n minus r. So, uh, so we have a, a more general theory with uh, tubes, tube domains over homogeneous cones and also holomorphic or homogeneous single domains of type two. So uh, now, so I, I was I first talk about, about uh, Lebesgue spaces on the on the homogeneous single domain of type two, so associated with a cone omega and with a V emission form F. But now I'm going to, since I'm, 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 uh, my, my, my topic here is to transfer result from tube domain. So here is the same omega as before, as for the homogeneous single domain of type two, but on the tube domain, there's no F. F is identically zero. So uh, on this, on this uh, tube domain, I take a weighted measure. So I defined tau, parameter tau before, delta tau before, or y. So I take this weighted measure, dx, delta tau of y, dy. And I take the LPQ tau of t omega, the associated weighted mixed norm, the back space. So it's uh, just as usual as the... Uh, and uh, the weighted mixed norm Bergman space is just the, the intersection of this mixed norm Lebesgue space with uh, holomorphic. And uh, there's also an associated weighted Bergman pro projector. So uh, yes, what I have to say now, it's a sort of reminder, 
is that is that in this in our, in this case in our case of homogeneous single domains of type two and tube domains over uh, homogeneous cones, the expressions of the weighted Bergman kernels and are known as explicitly known, explicitly known. So we refer to a paper by Kidikin in 1964. And for symmetric cones, uh, at least for tube domains over, or over symmetric cones, we refer to Faro and Porani, 1994. So uh, let me also give a sort of gentle reminder here. Theorem. Every bounded homogeneous domain has a realization as a homogene homogeneous single domains of type two. That's why homogeneous single domains of type two are called general generalized upper half plane. So this is also has also something to do with the Cartan's problem. So since we know the expressions of the weighted Bergman kernels for the tube over tube domains over symmetric ones and for homo, homo homogeneous single domains of type two, using the change, the change of variable in the Bergman kernel, we also have the expressions, explicitly the expression of the unweighted Bergman kernel of a bounded homogeneous domain. So let me just say that for, for classical bounded symmetric domain, for the expressions, you can refer to the book, the book of here. So now we, let me state our first theorem. So this is a joint work with uh, Jocelyn Gonesa and Cyril Nana, uh, 2019. So we assume, if we assume, those, so this is a transference principle from the tube to the homogeneous single domain. So we say with the same cone omega. If we assume that the weighted Bergman projector P tau, as you just defined, of a tube domain T omega is bounded on the mixed norm, uh, Bergman space on T omega with a weight tau, tau, as I defined before, then the unweighted Bergman projector P of D, D omega F, the homogeneous single domain of type two, so now with a V emission form associated, is also bound, is bounded on LPQ D of omega F. So this is, uh, I wrote it uh, very sim simple, but this is a particular case of a res or not res general result we obtain with general uh, vector weight. So, uh, so this is our first result, it's the transference principle. So to have the result of boundedness on the, on, on the Bergman projector, on the homogeneous single domain step two, we can transfer it from the result we have on the tube over the symmetric cone omega, the same, the same cone omega. So this is, uh, this makes things maybe may very uh, more, more, uh, more simple, simpler. So let me give an idea of a proof. Uh, there's uh, an operator related to the cone. So uh, we have a, we have the inner product here. So it's the, the inner product here. When the cone is symmetric, the inner product gives the, uh, the, the dual, so this, this inner product defines a dual cone. And when the, the, the cone is, the cone omega is symmetric, is dual cone is uh, more or less equal to the, the cone itself. So there's a, a differential operator called the generalized wave operator called the box. So that when you apply it to the exponential, this complex exponential, we just have, we have the same exponential with a, a factor here. There's a name for that, I, I don't remember. Uh, you have the, with this factor here, which is, uh, which is the power of the compound function for the dual cone. And doing this, when you apply it to the compound functions uh, in T omega, T, T substitute omega, the power just changed. The power which was minus mu goes to minus mu minus rho because the operator here is uh, associated with, uh, associated with the, to the box, there's uh, a parameter rho, which also appears here. 
So this is true, so that we can we can replace what we do for the upper half plane, where we the operator, the wave operator is just uh, z over dz. So the the corresponding operator here is the box. So we have so we have the box, and we have uh, we have this uh, result. So this, these are things which were were known almost known uh, maybe 15 years ago in the Jocelyn Gonesa's dissertation that if we have we are in the we are in the homogeneous single domain of type two we have if we have the following Hardy type inequality inequality so we have dv of u which appears here and here also after the delta of k q of y minus f of u we also have dy and d times dv of u so if you have this hardy type inequality then the unweighted bergman projector p of p of omega s is bounded so if you can prove this this is hardy type inequality, then we have that uh, the unweighted Bergman projector P is bounded. So this is this was uh, a tool we already used uh, in our collaboration for on two domains of a symmetric cone. So we know uh, so it's uh, a paper of uh, Onami, Garigos, uh, Richie, Seba, and myself, which appeared in the uh, journal Fifty Reiner, uh, in, uh, I think 2010. That now, now here we are on the tube domain over the cone omega, symmetric cone. No, here the cone is homogeneous, but we, in uh, the paper, in the paper uh, I referred to, the cone was symmetric, but you can also prove that. For homogeneous, not necessarily con, not necessarily symmetric cone. This result is also true that if p tau p tau is uh, the, the, the Bergman projector, the weighted Bergman projector on t omega, so tau is uh, what for the weight, then this has the type inequality holds for t omega. Uh, oh, 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 oh. So uh, there's a, a mix, a mix here. So if we have this, then I say that if I have this, then I have that the unweighted Bergman projector P of the omega f is bounded on L P Q of the omega f because since I know, I know if I know this. For my transference principles, I suppose I know this: p tau is bounded on L p q tau of t omega. Then I have this. But if I have this, then then I have this. Uh, so I fix I fix u for almost all u. I I have this restriction to omega, a sort of. Uh, a sort of Fivini, uh, Fivini equality. So if I apply, uh, I apply this theorem with phi of x plus i y equal to f of x plus i y u for almost all u belonging to C m. An integral, an integration with respect to u will finish with two. So if I take this value of uh, of phi here. So there's, there's some Fibini there because uh, this function is in LPQ. Uh, so this is this is the proof. Uh, so we just we just apply it here and we have a, we have a result. So uh, this transfer, this transfer. So what happened before is that Nana. And Troy and Troyan wrote a paper which appeared in the Anali Scuola Normale Superior, the PISA, uh, 
Anyway, there's a bibliography in the end. I think it's uh, more than 10 years ago, where they, they got uh, uh, estimates, LP estimates of the Bergman projector, the weighted Bergman projector on tube domains over homogeneous cones in general. So they extended what we did for symmetric cones. And later, Nana all alone also wrote, I think, uh, um, I don't know, if it, but they, have, they had to do it. Also, have LP estimates for homogeneous single domains of type 2. So, now uh, what, uh, what happens here is that with this transference principle, the, the, results, the results of Nana are, are for free from the results of Nana and Trojan, which were these early, earlier results. And now also, uh, it's true that there are some restrictions. There are some restrictions in what they did, which are still open questions, I think. But for when, uh, when, the, cons, when the cons are the Lorentz cons, since uh, thanks to what, uh, what uh, Gustavo just proved, there are improvements, there are even, there are improvements because this cone is of rank two. So, and also since the Piateki Shapiro cone, uh, domain is associated to the Lorentz cone, it was a spherical cone, but it was, it's a Lorentz cone. So we could also, we could also uh, improve the estimates for the, Piate, the LP, LP estimates for the Piateki Shapiro domain. So this is, the first part of my talk. I don't know whether there are questions so far. This is the first result. Are there questions? No, I think we are done. So let me. Let me go further. So now uh, I'm going to talk about Lorentz spaces, Bergman Lorentz spaces. Because the idea was to, to, to give a conjecture, to, put, to ask a question, which, we, which uh, if we could solve it, maybe we could solve the problem or we could improve the LP estimates for tube domains over symmetric cones of rank R greater than three, maybe. So the idea was to, instead of using the interpolation via the complex method, is to use the interpolation via the real method. So uh, let me say something about uh, the Lorentz cone. So, I take a measure space, which is non-atomic, sigma finite. I take f, a measurable function on E mu. Distribution function of f is as usual. The non-increasing rearrangement function of f is as usual. The Lorentz space is as usual. It's, uh, this is a quasi-norm. If one smaller than or equal to p, smaller than infinity, and one smaller than or equal to Q smaller than infinity, or Q equal to infinity is uh, the weak type, the weak type uh, is the weak type, uh, uh, is the weak, weak type term, what is used for the weak type inequalities. So when P is equal to Q, uh, LPP is a uh, back space, the Lorentz space is a uh, Banach space with respect to an equivalent norm to what the one I gave, to the quasi norm I gave before. So uh, this is the result, the classical result of interpolation via the real method between Lebesgue spaces. So here there's no weight, LP not of E mu, LP1, I take the real interpolation. There are two factors in the interpolation, theta and q, and we obtain LPQ. We don't obtain 
LP, LP as the, for the complex method, you obtain LPQ, which you give more, more spaces. So for these values of P0 and P1, and 1 over P is, uh, is uh, as usual, it's equal to 1 minus theta over P0 plus theta over P1. And with, the, with uh, this equality, we, have, we also have an equivalence of now. So now uh, we apply it to, to T omega. Omega, let's say omega here be a symmetric cone of rank R. So we have uh, T mu nu as uh, uh, this is a measure, the same measure as uh, the one uh, Gustavo introduced before. So we, use, we take the notation LPQ is equal to L nu PQ. And the Bergman Lorentz space is uh, the intersection of the Lorentz space with the holomorphic in T subscript omega. So L nu PP is LP nu. So here we have, we want to want to interpolate. We want to interpolate, but to interpolate, one of the tool is having a bounded projector. It's having a bounded projector. We have to interpolate. We are going to interpolate from one to one plus q nu, which is uh, well, we cannot go more far than that because we don't have bounded projector. Uh, when we go uh, beyond one plus q nu, so p gamma, so we don't take gamma. Gamma p nu is uh, the associated Bergman projector. P gamma, gamma is not equal to nu. Gamma is uh, it's greater than nu, but it also is take p gamma extends to a bounded operator from L p nu to A p nu for one less than, uh, less than p less than q nu, respectively, one smaller than p, smaller than q nu. So here we are close to one. It's true that we go, we, we pass, we go past two, but we are close to one. But for the Bergman, for the Bergman project, for the, For the associated, the real associated segment for two, this is what we have. This is what uh, what uh, Gustavo uh, explained before. So maybe here uh, on the left, just smaller, smaller than. Uh, so he, but uh, P nu is not good when we go out of this interval. So when we go out of this interval, but close to close to one, we have to take another weighted Bergman projection, P gamma, but this is quite. And what you want to, you want to, to interpolate between a number which is close to one and a number which is close to one plus Q nu, you, have, you want to interpolate Bergman spaces, A, P naught, A, P nu, and A, P one nu, P naught being between one and Q nu, and P1 being between one and Q nu uh, inverse and one plus Q nu. What you do is that way, because when to interpolate, you need the, you need the back to, to I, to, we, we need, that's what our method uses the, the, the fact that we have a bounded projector. So in this case, it's P gamma. In this case, it's P nu. So we have two different bounded projections for two different intervals. So when you have to go close to one, to close to one to over Q nu, you change, you go from one, one uh, Bergman projector to the other. So you have, you, do, you have to interpolate, you interpolate two times. This is called the reiteration, it's a reiteration theorem. And we use the, uh, the reiteration problem here is due to, to Tom Wolf, to Tom Wolf reiteration theorem. So, so this is what is explained in this, uh, this is the, the theorem. This is the theorem. So here, uh, P naught is one, P one is in, in the first interval between one and Q nu. So you can get this quite easily. So you use P subscript gamma, the first bounded projector, weighted bounded projector. 
and here you go you are still you are still in the first interval close to one so you still use p subscript gamma and here the 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 result is not complete but uh, so we use the, the so we use the wolf reiteration theorem to so we, we have uh, we go from uh, p1 which is close to which is close to one plus q new and we see that uh, when Q is between one plus Q new inverse and Q new, uh, the Berman Lorentz spaces, which has associated a real interpolation theorem between A1 new and A new P1 Q new. So here we already use uh, the Wolf interpolation reiteration theorem. So this is also another, so this we go from, we go from P, P not more general than one close to one and to P1 close to one plus Q new and we can interpolate. But for those two, the latest two assertions, we apply the Wolf reiteration theorem. Okay. So uh, for real interpolation, there are, uh, I think it's uh, Stein and Weiss, maybe the collaborators that was in the, uh, in the 60s, maybe in the 50s, who uh, introduced operators of restricted width types. So they are more general than operators of which type, which type PQ. So if we have uh, two non-atomic sigma finite measure spaces, I have a, a linear operator T defined on simple functions on R mu one, and taking values on the measurable functions on S mu2, the second measure space, we say that P is of restricted type P, PQ if there is a, a positive constant M such that this inequality is true. But to see that this is weaker than a weak type inequality, because in a weak type inequality, you would just put, you would just put a general function f here and also integrate the function f here you will you, you would integrate the, the, the function f here with respect to mu so this is this is uh, this is more uh, this is respect this is more restrictive is restricted because we just test on the simple on the simple functions on measure on the Characteristic functions to have this. We don't. We do not test on the. We don't. We don't take weak type uh, operators, weak type PQ operators, like in the Masikiewicz uh, interpolation theorem, right? So now the let me state the the standard wise problem uh, theorem. So. Uh, so let T as above be of restrictive type P naught, Q naught, and P1, Q naught. And if P1, Pj is equal smaller than Qj, J equal to zero and one, then T as a unique extension as a linear operator, which is on strong type this time, PQ, that is, you have, this is a strong type inequality between, uh, between these two measure spaces. So to have this, we do not need, uh, as usual in the Masinkiewicz interpolation theorem, we do not need weak type, usual weak type interpolation. We can take this restrictive type inequality. With a restrictive type, restrictive weak type property. So, uh, knowing that, I think I was not so, I did not listen so carefully to the table. But this was, uh, this is uh, a conjecture we gave in the same paper, Jonah Federine in 2010, that P nu is bounded in LP nu if or only if P is between P prime nu, the conjugate 
of B nu, B nu is given here. So this was solved for the Lorentz cone, but for R greater than three, so far the result is this, which is uh, this interval is smaller than this one. So uh, this is a related open question we, we raised. So if uh, we just, if you could prove that P nu is of restricted type P1, P1, for a P1, which is beyond one plus Q nu, one plus Q nu was our, is our bound so far, for which we know that P nu is bounded on LP. This is the, 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 the right, uh, the right end. So we are, we want to go up to the, the conjecture, the right end in the conjecture. If you want to, if you have, want to, you could have P1 for P1 in this interval or P1 in the dual interval, in the conjugate interval, so that P nu is of restricted type P1, P1. That means this, this is not, a, again, it's not a, so of restricted weak type P1, P1. If you could prove this, This would enlarge with the interval of the exponent for which the weighted Bergman projector is bounded on LP nu. So we could go to, we could go beyond to from one plus Q1 to P1, to P1, if you can prove this. And using the sine and wise uh, theorem, we could, we could, we could go further. So, so this is the question we raised because it's not, is the, uh, this is weaker than the weak type inequality, the usual weak type inequality, but one has to take care of, uh, of uh, the function P nu of K e, e, where E is a measurable subset. Well, we could not that do that, but we, we raised this problem. Uh, the problem is of course posit positive, the answer is of course positive when R is equal to two. This is uh, Gustavo's talk. And uh, it, will, it can be uh, interesting to prove it. To prove it, in this case, the case where r is equal to two at the endpoint, to prove it at the endpoint p nu and p, p prime nu. So we have uh, we have strong type in between, but do we have weak type? Do you have weak type, restricted weak type at the end, p nu and p prime nu? This is true for n equal to r equal to one of the Bergman projection in one dimension. So here it will be the upper half plane. This is true. This is true that uh, you have a weak type in we have a weak type inequality at the at the end. The end here is uh, infinity. In fact, it's infinity for p nu is infinity and p prime nu is one. So it's no. This is known. So this is the question we raised. I don't know whether there's a question before I go to application. I think so far so good, you, you can continue. Say it again, please. Oh, uh, uh, so far so good. I uh, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. So now I'm going. Oh, I'm going over to application. So the first application I announced is atomic decomposition for vector weighted fixed norm Bergman space. Hmm. So uh, this came. This uh, originates from the original work of Koifman and Rockberg, nineteen. 80 for scalar weighted uh, Bergman spaces on symmetric single domain of type two. And uh, after this, uh, Fulvio Ricci and Mitch Tabelson, 1983, they did, did it on the more general setting, vector weighted mixed norm, I think, uh, for the upper half plane. So it's uh, complex dimension one. And then in 19, in 2004, in uh, our monograph, 
we did some we did some we did something for the scalar weighted uh, Bergman spaces on tube domains on symmetric cones. Uh, so let me state the result. So this is uh, also this recent is uh, an early 2020. So this is the typical atomic decomposition. So we, we, we s s is a is a vector. So that's why I say it's a, we are that's why I say it's a weighted. We are, we are working with vector weighted big norm Bergman spaces. So s is a vector. There's a condition on the on its components. S k is greater than n over k. N subscript k over two. N subscript over k is uh, those uh, integers defined by Winbeck. I take the associated weighted Bergman kernel, ds, and I assume that ps is bounded on LPQS. So this is uh, the mixed norm. The mixed norm, the vector weighted mixed norm Lebesgue space. I assume that ps is bounded there. Then there exists a sequence. ZLJ with a top two scripts, two indices. Uh, for Y, it's just oh, there's I, there's an I, I missing here, of course. For I, YI, y, YJ, L doesn't appear, but on the XLJ, L appears, L belonging to Z, and N belonging to Z plus. This is just like in the Fulvio Ricci and the Mitch de Bolson's paper of point in a T omega, there's a sequence like that, such that every function belonging to F, every function F belonging to APQS may be written this way. This is uh, what we mean by atomic decomposition. And uh, there are also an estimate on the coefficient lambda LQ, which is this in terms of uh, of a weighted of a mixed norm of a mixed norm weighted mixed norm sequence sequence space so this is essentially there's also a, a converse but this is the, this is the, the main result so for the proof uh, the proof we, we found in the in our monograph in our uh, what we wrote in 2004, uh, Bonami, uh, Gustavo, Marco, Cyril Nana, Fulvio, the prof we gave was this. You consider this, you consider this operator. And you want to show that this operator is onto, that because you want to prove that a function, a function f which belongs to AP, QS, can be written in this form, that there is a lambda LG, so that it can be written in this form. When you look at the adjoint operator, you get that the adjoint operator is exactly L star of F equal to the sequence F of Z L G. This is a sequence, but this adjoint operator, we can prove that it is bounded, it's easy. Uh, but we also, for the proof, there's also uh, an inequality called sampling, which gives uh, the norm of A P prime Q prime S smaller than the norm the L P Q small L P Q norm of F of Z L G. That this way. So when you see this, you know exactly that uh, the adjoint operator is onto the sampling, which gives no. So. So this gives you the onto-ness of R. So we, we prove this in the same way as uh, what we did with uh, what we did with what we did in uh, in this joint paper, this just uh, lecture notes of 2004. But now uh, what we did in that time, because we didn't have the complete result for tube domains over Lorentz spaces, Lorentz cones. Over Lorentz code, so we can we can uh, since the condition is the condition is that P S is bounded on L P Q S. So for 
take my, for Lawrence Bones, we have we have a, a larger set of uh, good S, which are uh, which give this result because we enlarge the the LPQ S estimates for the Lorentz code. So this we took it into account in uh, this paper in uh, Anali Scholar Normale Superiore. So this was uh, no almost no. This is was uh, the first part of uh, atomic decomposition. But doing this, we did not use the original the original approach of uh, Kuipman and Rockberg, which was more constructive. And we should also give results for even for zero, more smaller than P, smaller than one. Uh, so let me have to, my time is almost finished. So in the original paper, so uh, what one have to, uh, one uh, besides the LP boundedness or Bergman, Bergman projection, there was uh, this estimate. Uh, to prove that what happened to the Bergman kernel when you are when zeta one and zeta two are at the distance smaller than rho, see there was this uh, this uh, inequality, which was good because in the uh, Goldman and uh, procedure they used the sort of uh, how do you call that discretization discretization on the uh, Bergman balls. So you have to be sure that when you 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 stay in the Bergman ball, the Bergman kernel does not do, does not uh, change substantially. So this uh, this uh, lemma was due was attributed to Horani in the uh, in the Kuhlman and Rockbest paper, uh, and they proved it for symmetric single domains of type two. And they conjecture that it could be true for general homogeneous non necessary symmetric single domains of type 2. So we proved this in 2014. This is a joint work with Ideyuki Ishii and Cyril Nana. We proved it. Uh, I don't have time. But the proof uses a Kele transform, which appears, which is called uh, the Bergman mapping, which was uh, introduced by Pene. In 1996, from Z, so you get you take Z, which is Z is unbounded to a bounded domain. So this makes uh, things work. So another application, which is uh, original after after Rockman and Rockbeck paper, Rockbeck continued with uh, interpolation by function in Bergman spaces. So uh, he did it for symmetric single domains of type two. Uh, so what is the separation by? So you have uh, you take this uh, this restriction to a function in A P nu of d. You get uh, you apply you map it to f of zeta k delta nu one over p zeta k, and uh, the, the problem is to prove that this this uh, this mapping is onto. That means that if you have a sequence here, you can get a function here such so that before this function takes exactly this value. So the result is uh, that the, the points, the points the S on the sequence of points have to be sufficiently large. So we apply it uh, it's almost the same proof as Robert. But we, you, we could apply it here since we had the, since we have the Koranian lemma in the general setting. So uh, just one slide interpolation. By, we also have an application interpolation by the complex method between two vector weighted mixed norm Bergman spaces with possible different weights. So this, yes, of course, we use the Wolf refutation theorem as before. But this time for the complex method, but we also use interpolation with change of measure, which is uh, Steiner Weiss uh, some time ago. Uh, so uh, just to say that before we we've uh, 
Gonessa and Nana, we did something on two of the domains of our symmetricals. So here we did it for, for more general domains. So uh, I don't know whether my time is over. So I gave some, some references. Thank you for your kind attention.